Hello, hello everybody. This is your uh, notes video on the volume of prisms and cylinders, all right? So I'm just gonna go ahead and jump right into it here. So for prisms, okay, there is a general formula for the volume of a prism, okay? And it is capital BH, where capital B is the area of the base shape Okay, and H is the height of the prism. Okay, so for example, in this triangular prism right here, capital B would be this, right? The area of this base shape right here. And then the height would be right here, right? Essentially what you're doing is you're taking the the 2D shape at the base and like extending it almost like a like a slinky if you all ever played with slinkies when you were a kid right you would start out with this really like small thing and then you would stretch it out right and the volume would increase right the space that you could fill inside the slinky would get a lot bigger right because you stretched it out further okay you were just taking that base shape and extending it making it taller okay uh, for a rectangular prism, there is a special formula that we can use, but it's still essentially the same as this general one, right? Because uh, see how you have an H here, and then length times width is just the area of a rectangle, right? That's the area of the base shape, okay? But this one I'm sure you've seen before, right? Volume of a rectangular prism, length times width times height. All right, so let's do a couple of examples. Okay, so here's my forward example. So this is a rectangular prism. So if I wanna find the volume of my rectangular prism, that's length times width times height. Okay, so I have length and width, and then this is my height. So I'm just gonna multiply all of those together. Length is two, width is two, and height is four. So two times two is four, and four times four is 16. And then the last thing I need is my units. So my unit in the problem was miles, mi, and since I'm dealing with a volume here, it's miles cubed, right? To indicate that you, we are working in three dimensions, okay? Here is a backwards example for you, where I'm gonna give you the volume and you have to find something that's missing, okay? So here in this problem, I'm looking for the height of the prism, okay? But I do know that lowercase b, so the base of the triangle is five, and I do know that the height of the triangle is eight, okay? So I need to use that to find capital B, the area of my base shape. So capital B here, is the area of that triangle at the bottom, okay? Which is, remember, area of a triangle is one half times the base of the triangle, which is five, times the height of the triangle, which is eight, okay? Uh, so this becomes one half of 40, five times eight is 40, and half of 40 is 20. So that's the area of my base. So I know that the volume is capital B, times height of the prism, okay? My volume is 240 equals, and then I just found that capital B was 20. So I'm just gonna divide both sides by 20, All right? And what you get is that the height is 12, and then I need to look just to do my unit. So 12, and it would be feet. Right? You don't need like a squared or a cubed or anything because you're just looking for one of the dimensions, height, right? So it's just a distance. It's not an area, not a volume, okay? So that's a very classic like working backwards example. And I'm hoping you can see after maybe watching the surface area video that volume is a lot easier <laughs> just because the formulas are much simpler, okay? So give me a second. Let me... Uh, pause the video really fast and clear my screen so that we can quickly talk about the volume of a cylinder. All right, folks, so here we are 
for the volume of a cylinder, okay? The formula for the volume of a cylinder is pi r squared h. But remember, pi r squared is just the area of the circle, right? So that's capital B, the area of the base shape. Okay, so it still fits in with the general formula, which is that the volume is equal to capital BH, right? All follows the same pattern. Okay, so in my cylinder here, remember that radius goes from the center of the circle out to its circumference, out to its edge. Okay, and then H is obviously here, the height of the cylinder. Okay, so let's do one example going forwards, and then again, an example going backwards. Okay, so here's my forward example where five centimeters is the height, okay, but eight centimeters is the diameter, not the radius. So remember that the, uh, that the diameter is equal to two times the radius, right? So if my diameter is eight, that means that my radius, to get my radius, I have to cut that in half. So my radius is four, okay? Very important, make sure that you are actually plugging the radius into the formula rather than the diameter. They like to throw things at you like that uh, to try to trip you up a little bit. Okay, so I know that volume of my circle equals pi r squared h. Okay, so pi times r is four, so four squared and then times five. Once you get to this point, just Deal with your exponents, follow your order of operations. Deal with your exponents, multiply, and then work the pi in at the very end, okay? So four squared is 16, so I have pi times 16 times five, okay? 16 times five is 90. Did I do that correctly? No, that's not correct. It's not 90. What am I talking about? Apologies, it's 80. <laughs> I really should be able to do that kind of thing in my head. <laughs> okay, so this is 80, and then I still have my pi on there. So I'm going to do in my calculator 80 times, and then I'm going to hit my pi symbol uh, so that I don't have any rounding error. So this is 251.33. If you round, and then I need my units. So the original unit in the problem was centimeters. So this is centimeters. And then because it's volume, it needs to be centimeters cubed. I'm actually going to rewrite that so it's not. <laughs> centimeters cubed. Okay, so that would be my final answer for that one. All right. Okay, then last up here, let's take a look at a working backwards example, okay? So this time they gave me the volume and the radius and I have to find the height. Okay, so I'm still using the same formula. Volume equals pi r squared h. You're just plugging stuff into different places. So rather than plugging in something for r and h, I'm gonna plug in volume and I'm gonna plug in radius. So my volume was 602.88 equals pi, and then my radius is four, so four squared, and then I'm gonna leave h as a variable because I don't know what it is, okay? I'm gonna do some simplifying, so I have 602.88 equals 14 squared is 16, so this is 16 pi h, right? Now to get h by itself, I'm gonna divide both sides by 16 pi. So it cancels both of those things out, right? Remember, pi is just a number, even though it's you know a long, irrational, never-ending number, it is still a number, okay? Now, if you were doing this in, uh, and doing this division like in, a, in an iPhone calculator, for example, you would have to do, you would have to type in, um, and I'm gonna write this over here, okay? But you would have to type in, 602.88 divided by 16 first and get what that is. So 602.88 divided by 16 
is 37.68, and then take that number and divide it by pi. You have to do it in like two steps. You can't just type 602.88 divided by 16 and then hit your pi symbol. You're gonna get the wrong answer if you're dealing with a cell phone calculator most of the time, okay? Right, so this gives me, when I do 37.68 divided by pi, it gives me 11.99, so I'm just gonna round up and say 12, right? So my height here is 12, and then I need my I need my units. My units are centimeters. All right, folks. So that is it for this uh, this video on volume of prisms and cylinders. All right, much simpler, at least in my opinion, than uh, than surface area just because the formulas are a little bit less complicated, right? If you're feeling comfortable with this idea and feel like you can jump into practice, go ahead and do that. Uh, but there's also gonna be one more video uh, that's just a couple of practice problems where I'll do some more examples for you, like the ones you've seen in these past couple of videos, all right? So uh, whichever video you watch next, I'll see you in the next one. Bye, everybody.